heard a great keynote this morning about outreach and education and how it's important. And uh, maybe since we all sort of share that, that interest, uh, we could discuss a little bit some of the things that you presented this morning and how it could be applied through organizations similar to the PSF or educational organizations or through nonprofits like uh, Pi Ladies. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my, my one message, if people could take it away from this keynote, is that it is really possible for us as individuals and as groups to, to make real changes in the world. And the PSF is actually a really good, has good infrastructure for doing this mm -hmm. internationally. So we, and we have a huge grants program to fund outreach and education initiatives. And you know we want more people to take advantage of the support infrastructure that the PSF has. I mean, the you know, Pi Ladies is a phenomenal example of um, this infrastructure being put to good use. Yeah, well, Pi Ladies is a global network and it provides mentorship and support like globally, but then it comes to reality in the form of local chapters and that's the really mm -hmm. cool thing about it because uh, we can like meet, you know, real people mm -hmm. locally at the um, at every scale but we can also like reach out to other groups to get ideas and uh, I reached out to Jessica in the past for like support and uh, mm -hmm. mentorship and inspiration because as a chapter lead I was feeling a bit drained I wasn't sure you know which direction my group was taking uh, but it's, it's great to know that you know there's like some structure um, not like above you but around you to like um, help you and support you yeah <laughs> Yeah, so you don't have to reinvent the, the, the wheel. wheel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know if this, um, how much do, do these organizations work with universities, with individuals who are not really affiliated? I mean, they're, um, they're, they're interested in science, but they're not really affiliated with programming. I mean, there are a lot of initiatives in this space across the age spectrum. Mm -hmm. So sort of working with adults, there's an event called, well, a, an international series of events called Software Carpentry mm -hmm. that teach um, <laughs> programming and software engineering skills mm -hmm. to scientists. Yeah, I'm bringing Matt Hab into this. Oh, yes. excellent. Um, so, so that's, and that, you know, a lot of the Software Carpentry folks are involved with the Python Software Foundation as well. So that's one really good example. Mm -hmm. But then even with kids, uh, there are people running tech camps, summer camps, uh, working with their local Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. So, you know, really up and down the spectrum. Uh, There's something you brought involved. up in your keynote about maybe um, programming not being tied properly to like science and technology, but uh, I mean, how much is that of an issue? Or, I mean, it's like, I don't want to be ideological about it or anything. Um, yeah, so, so in the United States, I think a lot of schools and school districts are struggling with how computer science fits into, fits into an already pretty crammed high school curriculum. Mm -hmm. And you already have a lot of required classes. You have science classes, you have math classes, you have business classes. And yeah. schools are struggling with how to find the resources and the teachers and the scheduling to permit more students to take programming, computer science, and computational thinking classes. This is something we're still figuring out in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Maybe in Canada it's a different story and I'd love to hear about um, Oh, I think it's, uh, it's well. the same. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. I think the, the, the biggest thing that I remember from, from my high school was um, uh, this, this fear of math. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, the two are, you know, programming and math are closing things together, but I, I never understood why people are scared of math in the first place, <laughs> <laughs> let alone programming. Uh, but... Yeah. That's something else that I wanted to um, discuss because from my experience, I had a family who were math teachers. Okay. <laughs> so they, they had this environment, you know, this kind of a environment where like, no, 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 it's, it's easy. You, you can do it. It's really mm -hmm. easy. But as soon as I went to school, it's the opposite. And um, when it comes to education, uh, a lot of times it's families do have an impact on their kids. And I don't know if uh, maybe the PSF or, or other programs can actually work with families instead of instead of trying to focus on schools because um, uh, you mean it, like the connotation around programming or the culture that's associated with programming per yeah se? or even yeah. talking to parents uh, because a lot of you know parents want the best for their kids so if you tell parents that you know this is, these are the things that are going to happen in the future then maybe they'll be interested in getting their kids involved in them um, and then you don't have to put more pressure on teachers to do that. Mm -hmm. I think people have realized, especially in the last couple of years, that 
uh, the way that computer science is articulated to, to teachers and to parents and to kids mm -hmm. it is really important. And so you've seen initiatives like Code.org that really, um, in a very accessible and articulate way, um, demonstrate why this is a useful skill for kids to be yeah. able to pursue and pursue it transcends school. fields. Yeah, exactly. That's why nowadays, I mean, a bit of coding is necessary, just like reading and writing. And yeah. uh, I mean, President Obama knows, so uh, obviously <laughs> uh, it's become a bit mainstream. But um, I guess um, we still need to advocate for more, you know, outreach. And also, there's now research that demonstrates that, in particular, girls um, respond more positively to programming when it is contextualized within your ability to impact society positively. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think so. People are you know, making it interdisciplinary, showing that you you program for a reason yeah, um, yeah. is something that we're you know schools are trying to integrate more. The new curricula are trying mm -hmm. to integrate more. So do you think it's important to show that it's just um, at the end of the day, it's just a tool and it's not the purpose? Uh, you know, it's sort of, um, I guess, the, the same paradigm with um, with science is that you you do you use scientific methods to discover things, but you don't do science you don't you don't do science just for the sake of science because then it wouldn't make any sense. Uh, I don't, is that do you think that's the same? I think many people find programming to be fun in and of itself. In itself it's deeply yeah. creative. It's sort of pro, you know constant problem solving. Mm -hmm. But you know connecting it to real world applications yeah. is also really important. Of course. Oh. Yeah. Uh, this might be a hard question. Uh, how do you see? Um, programming in an international level and in other languages, I want to say per se, because it's all, uh, you know, everything that we see is mainly in English, all the documentation is mainly in English. Um, what, what can we do to actually make that easier for people who don't speak English? Well, I know that like uh, in the web uh, through Mozilla or like other organization, there is a big effort for localization or Wikipedia. The Wikipedia mm -hmm. community is also very good for this, like reaching out to the local communities to have people, you know, um, own projects locally mm -hmm. and develop it in their own languages and with their own like cultural standards. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully the internet, you know, the internet should enable us to do this and it should not be like just a channel to propagate, you know, cultural imperialism or whatever. Um, I think that, um, well, then it's it's a really large scope, you know, like net neutrality. I, re uh, I, I would refer people to um, the keynote from yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. John Peru Barlow. Um, yeah. Because that's where, like you know, um, culture and technology kind of meet. Yeah, and I also say I think people have been surprised how long it has taken um, the world to move away from English and ASCII to a more flexible system like Unicode, mm -hmm. so that we can even support mm -hmm. um, the different character sets that people use internationally. These things take time, but we are developing the tools and sort of the global awareness to make better progress on these things. And I think Wikipedia is a great example. Yeah. There are now good examples from large organizations doing this effectively and doing it efficiently yeah. and doing it with a, like a distributed network of volunteer help. Yeah. That really gives me hope for other open source projects. Yeah, uh, this yeah. is something the, that the Python Software Foundation cares a lot about. I think yeah. in mm -hmm. the next couple of years we, we, we want to figure out ways, you know, tactical ways to become um, you know, more, more accessible mm -hmm. yeah. in a global sense, not just along the the diversity axes we've been most focusing on today. Okay, so if I wanted to start, uh, you know, run my own PyCon small town in Iran kind of uh, Oh yeah, and that happens. Event, uh, there was a PyCon in Iran, I think this past year, actually. Oh, cool, um, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, and the PSF can help. Hey, we have great. a conference yeah. mailing list and we yeah. provide grants to most of the regional PyCons. Okay, yeah. wow, that's great to know. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you have any other questions or anything else you'd like to say to our community, to Montrealers? Uh, I'm just really happy that PyCon is taking place in Montreal. Uh, we're having a great time and I think people are enjoying themselves and mm -hmm. uh, it's really good to meet all these like famous people that we always see online. <laughs> but yeah, uh, It's, it's been a really wonderful yeah. city to visit. Yeah. I mean, and it's a really accessible city mm -hmm. and, you know, good food, good people. It's been really fun. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad to know that. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Yes.